Hello, everybody, and welcome back to my channel. I'm Julie, and tonight in this lesson, we're going to be working on reading comprehension number six. So it should be pretty interesting for you. At least I'm hoping you find it interesting. Tonight, we're going to be learning about the mosquito. I don't know anybody that likes mosquitoes, especially me. Okay, so this is reading comprehension number six, the mosquito. And here we go. Mosquitoes are annoying pests that are responsible for ruining pleasant evenings by the fire, camping trips, and family barbecues. Their bites are painful and they leave the area on the skin swollen and itchy for days. Mosquitoes are vectors of parasitic diseases and hold the record of being the number one killer of humans on the planet every year. Can you believe that? Mosquitoes are responsible for millions, possibly billions of human deaths throughout history, the majority being in Africa. Here's a nice picture of our friends in Africa. Mosquitoes are attracted to humans because they can detect the carbon dioxide on our skin and the heat emitted from our bodies. Only female mosquitoes bite and suck blood from their victims. Now here is a female mosquito because only females bite you and suck your blood. They are especially attracted to people with type O blood, pregnant women, and people with an abundance of skin bacteria. They have no shortage of food supply because they will suck blood from a variety of hosts, including humans, primates, mammals, amphibians, reptiles, and birds. The females feed on the blood, which contains protein and iron needed to produce their eggs. The females lay their eggs mostly on the surface of stagnant water. Don't forget, if there are words in this reading comprehension that you don't know, you don't understand, you look them up in the dictionary, you put them on your vocabulary list, you translate them to your language, and you study this list every day. There are over 3,000 types of mosquitoes, but only a few hundred carry harmful and potentially dangerous or deadly diseases such as Zika virus, yellow fever, elephantiasis, dengue fever, Ross River virus, and the most dangerous and deadly disease, malaria. Malaria. The Anopheles mosquito is responsible for infecting humans with malaria and young children, the elderly and pregnant women and their unborn babies are most at risk of this disease. It is estimated that there are approximately 450,000 deaths per year from this disease alone. That's a lot. Look at this beautiful baby. Cases of malaria, of malaria are most commonly found in developing parts of countries such as Africa, South America, Asia, and the Middle East. Once bitten by a mosquito carrying the parasite, the parasite then travels to the liver and begins to reproduce. In only a few days, it re-enters the bloodstream and actively multiplies in the red blood cells. Symptoms of malaria include chest and abdominal pain, fever and chills, headaches, sweating, fatigue, backaches, nausea and vomiting, diarrhea, muscle and joint pain, dry cough and convulsions. 
This guy doesn't look too healthy. He looks quite sick. There is no effective vaccine for malaria, but fortunately, not everyone that becomes infected with malaria will die. There are some very good treatment methods used to treat infected people. There are also some very effective modern preventative medications available, which are a must for people planning to travel to areas where this disease is prevalent. Here's some medication. Unfortunately, many people in underdeveloped countries infected with this virus have no access to medication or medical assistance. Some people are very poor in these countries and they can't get any assistance if they get infected. Modern medication is effective at killing the parasite but the parasite is constantly evolving and becoming resistant to certain types of medication. And this means that new medications are constantly being researched and developed. Here we see somebody working in the laboratory, working very hard to find uh, solutions for this terrible disease. Malaria has been almost eradicated in most parts of the developed world. However, a few hundred cases still show up each year, so it's not completely gone. Developed countries have used a variety of public health strategies to achieve malaria-free areas. Some of these strategies include developing and installing effective water drainage systems, draining locations with stagnant water, which are areas where mosquitoes thrive and breed. They love areas like this. Stagnant water, water that doesn't move. Smaller cities, towns, and villages in underdeveloped countries worked hard to increase public awareness about the dangers of contracting malaria and the importance of taking preventative medication. Health officials also encouraged the use of insect repellents and they educated people about installing protective nets around beds when sleeping. Pesticides were also used to kill mosquitoes in highly mosquito in highly mosquito populated areas. So this guy here is spraying the land for mosquitoes. Elephantiasis, also known as lymphatic filariasis. Elephantiasis is another mosquito-borne infection and is considered to be a neglected tropical disease caused by parasitic worms and found most commonly in Africa, Southeast Asia, South America, and India. Currently, more than 100 million people in 72 countries are infected with this disease. After a parasite carrying mosquito bites a person, the parasite then enters the body and finds its way to the lymphatic vessels where the larvae develop into adult worms. These worms then cause serious damage to the lymphatic system and the kidneys and also interfere with the body's immune system. The lymphatic system is responsible for eliminating waste and toxins from the human body. And if it becomes blocked due to such parasitic activity, it will then be unable to remove harmful waste from the body, causing a backup of lymphatic fluids, which then causes the extreme swelling of tissues in the affected body part. The most common symptom of this disease is extreme swelling and disfiguring of body parts, 
including the arms and legs, which causes severe pain and discomfort, as well as mobility issues. The, the skin in the infected area becomes dry, dark, and very thick. Fever and chills are also common symptoms of this disease. The parasite that causes this disease is carried by the Culex, Anopheles, and the Aedes mosquito and may cause asymptomatic, acute, or chronic conditions in a person. People that suffer from this disease are physically disabled due to the body deformities and usually spend their lives living in poverty due to the stigma associated with this disease. These people are socially isolated and suffer from mental and monetary stress due to lack of gainful employment opportunities and the added financial burden of medical expenses. Here's a picture of a person physically disabled due to body deformities caused by elephantiasis. This is what the body will look like and different parts of the body can be affected. So it's quite painful and quite horrible to have this condition. Large scale preventative chemotherapy treatments are used to combat this disease as well as the use of insecticide treated protective nets installed around beds for safe sleeping. Let's look at the Zika virus. The Zika virus is another disease spread by an infective Aedes mosquito, which is a common species throughout the world. The virus was first identified in monkeys in Uganda in 1947 and in humans in 1952. While some people have no symptoms when infected by this disease, others may have fever, rash, muscle and joint pain, headaches, abdominal pain, and even suffer from complications to the brain and nervous system. A pregnant woman infected with this virus will pass the virus to her unborn baby and has an increased chance of having a premature baby, a miscarriage, or a stillborn baby. The baby may be born with a birth defect such as a condition called microcephaly, which is a potentially fatal brain condition where the brain is abnormally small and underdeveloped. Babies born with this condition have very poor brain function and limited life expectancy. The Zika, the Zika virus is considered to be a public health emergency of international concern, and the CDC, or the Center for Disease Control, often issues warnings to pregnant women not to travel to certain affected areas. Warnings should have an S on it. Often issues warnings to pregnant women. Currently, there is no vaccine for this virus, but fortunately, most people make a full recovery after being infected by this virus and suffering from only some minor symptoms. In the past, there were cases where the Zika virus was transmitted to another person through blood transfusions and organ donations, but today most blood donation organizations screen blood donations for this dangerous virus. Here, this blood will be tested for this disease and other diseases, I'm sure. To avoid contracting this virus, the standard recommend recommendations must be followed to reduce the risk of exposure. These recommendations include wearing protective clothing 
like long pants and shirts with sleeves, a head covering or hood, avoiding areas where mosquitoes are abundant, using insect repellent and staying indoors with well-installed window screens as much as possible during periods of the year when mosquitoes are most prevalent. This guy is dressed properly to go out hiking in the woods. A hood on his head, long pants, a jacket or a shirt with long sleeves. Let's look at yellow fever. After being bitten by the Aedes mosquito carrying this virus, it can take up to six days for symptoms to develop. These symptoms include headache, backache, fever, chills, muscle pain, loss of appetite, weakness, and dehydration. Most people fully recover after the onset of these symptoms after only a few days. This guy's not feeling well, but he'll be feeling better in a few days. This virus attacks the liver and causes yellowing of the skin and in the whites of the eyes, hence the name yellow fever. The medical term for this yellowing condition is jaundice. Some people infected with this virus may experience severe symptoms such as internal bleeding, as well as bleeding from the mouth, nose, and eyes, shock, abdominal pain, nausea, vomiting, fatigue, organ failure, kidney problems, seizures, delirium, and sometimes even death. This virus is mostly found in Africa and South America, and the risk of being infected is always present. The risk is increased if people or travelers visit wooded or jungle-like areas or engage in outdoor activities like hiking, sports, biking, or camping. This guy's camping. Unfortunately, there is no cure for this disease, but fortunately, there is a vaccine available to prevent the infection of this disease. Once symptoms and complications develop and appear, there is no treatment, but only remedies and medication for relief of symptoms. Because this virus is so problematic, Many countries require proof of vaccination against this virus before traveling to and entering their countries. This vaccine is a single dose vaccine and is considered to be safe and effective. She's getting her vaccine before traveling to another country. This vaccine is not recommended for children under the age of nine months, pregnant or breastfeeding women, or adults over 60 years old. This vaccine takes 10 days to become effective. So if you plan to travel, make sure that you get your preventative dose in advance. There are approximately 125,000 severe infections of yellow fever per year worldwide, causing almost 45,000 deaths. 90% of these cases appear in Africa. Let's look at dengue fever. Dengue fever is another Aedes mosquito-borne illness and is common in the Western Pacific Islands, Latin America, Southeast Asia, and Africa. Some cases have recently appeared in Europe and in the southern United States. The symptoms of this nasty virus include headache, nausea and vomiting, pain and discomfort behind the eyes, muscle joint and muscle joint and bone pain, skin itching, rash and high fever. Most infected people have no symptoms, while others infected 
experience symptoms, but usually recover within seven to 10 days. The not so lucky infected people experience worsening and more severe symptoms that develop quickly and may become life-threatening. These life-threatening symptoms include damage to the blood vessels, which can lead to shock, internal bleeding, severe stomach pain, persistent vomiting, breathing difficulties, bleeding from the gums or nose, dangerously low blood pressure, organ failure, and death. The good news is that a vaccine for this virus has recently been approved and is available in certain countries. Almost 4 million people are infected worldwide each year with dengue fever, and approximately 500,000 cases require hospitalization, and in extreme cases, a blood transfusion. Looks like this patient is going to be just fine after her great medical care. Of these cases, approximately 50,000 will die each year. Sad. Okay, let's look at some fun facts. Studies have shown that the presence of a full moon can increase mosquito activity by 500%. The reason for this is that mosquitoes use visual cues to locate their next victim and meal. And this is much easier to find with the bright light of the moon. The lifespan of a mosquito is seven days to a couple of months, depending on the species, the gender, the weather conditions, humidity, and food supply. Mosquitoes are mostly active when the temperature is between 15 and 25 degrees Celsius. They cannot function, which means they cannot hunt, draw blood, digest, and reproduce when the temperature is below 10 degrees Celsius. So that's why we never see mosquitoes in the wintertime. And that's why I love the wintertime. Okay, more fun facts. <clears throat> Let's compare the number of human deaths per year worldwide caused by other animals, insects, or things. Causes of human deaths per year. Sharks. Sharks kill six people per year. It's not a lot. You would think it would be more. Vending machines kill 13 people per year. That's more than sharks. Can't believe it. Cows or bulls, 22. Champagne corks kill 24 people per year. I can't believe it. When I was researching this stuff, I just couldn't believe it. Jellyfish kill 40 people per year. Tigers, 50. Bees, wasps, or hornets, 60 people. Ladders kill 105 people per year. Falling coconuts, 150 per year. Lions, 200. Buffalo, 200. Elephants, 250. Falling out of bed, 450 people die each year because they fell out of bed. Hippopotamuses, 500. Crocodiles, 1,000. Lightning, 2,000. Scorpions, 3,250. Dogs, 25,000. That's a lot. Snakes, 100,000 people die each year because of snakes. Humans kill other humans, 500,000 per year. This is homicides only. And mosquitoes, number one killer on the planet, kill between 725,000 to 1 million people per year. That's incredible. And exactly the smallest thing that's on this list. Mosquitoes kill that many people. Incredible. Well, whew, that was quite a story. So I hope that video 
uh, helped you increase your reading comprehension skills, also build your vocabulary. That would be super great. So if you guys need more help, if you need extra help, uh, you can get yourselves a copy of Basic English. This is the third edition, but the fourth edition has recently come out. So you should get a copy of the fourth edition of Basic English. Okay, this uh, book is published and distributed all over the world by McGraw-Hill. You can find it online, especially you'll find it on Amazon. Okay, this is a great workbook. I want you guys to start at the beginning, complete every single page right through to the end of the book. The answer key is at the back to support you while you are learning. Also, if you need help with your verb tenses, you can get yourselves a copy of English Verb Tenses. Great workbook to really help you master your English verb tenses. So many people tell me they have trouble with verb tenses. I don't know why. So easy. Also available on Amazon. Don't forget, you guys, to put a like on the video and leave a comment down below. It's the only way that my channel can grow and help other people just like you. I've said everything I've, I had to say. So I'm going to wish you guys a pleasant evening and I'll see you, you know where, in the next lesson. Good night for now.